All right, guys, so today's video, we're gonna go and show you how to get these two Omega mats. It's gonna be pretty big RNG fest, I'm not gonna lie. So um, we're gonna, gonna show you how to do this, what is it called, the Forest Moon um, Assault Battles. Um, I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> we're gonna go over Challenge Tier 2 because Challenge Tier 1 is pretty basic and easy. Um, I did this with just EP. Uh, I didn't even use this new one. So the new one um, that I found out about a few hours ago before I actually did this, um, it was with these guys. So let, let me bring it up really fast. It was with some of the droids. So the droids being B1, B2, BB8 actually, and also Magna Guard. And then for the Empire guys, we just use Thrawn. Thrawn lead is so crucial here. It really is. Um, so... You got those guys, we got Thrawn Lee, we got those droids. Um, we're going to show you this for Tier 2. I'm going to show you some buddies that went through kind of the first part of it, and then we're going to swap over to mine, because I didn't record the first part, because the first part of it is easy all the way up until Phase 4. Um, so we're not going to take too long with this, just straight up. The mods here that I was running, it was a Thrawn being at 316 speed. He needs to be fast so that he can get off Fracture later on, pretty quick I would say, and just helping the speed gap between everybody so he's at 316 and then coming back here to the droids um, we have bb8 who is at 324 so he's at 324 he's gonna get some more turn meter here with all the other droids so he's gonna be faster than thrawn for sure which is nice because there, there's a big part to having him faster than thrawn that i like one you do get him into phase four and tebow you want to make sure that you get illuminated destiny off before thrawn's fracture which gives you a lot more time to do the, the aoe's with your b1 on the side elders and then for b1 you have uh just pretty much a full entire offense set here you want to go full on offense so like offense on the cross offense on the arrow triangle everywhere everywhere you want offense so my offense you don't want speed because he gains a lot of extra speed from his unique um so he's around 9360 for his physical so the reason you don't want a whole lot of um speed on him because he gets 15% TM whenever an, another droid ally or, um, or wait, I thought it was for, no, it's for actually just any droid. Whenever another droid ally uses a special ability he gains, I thought it was for Separatists as well, but no, it's just for any droid. So that's really why it's important to have BB-8 here as well, so that he gets even more TM. I know there's other people who are, you know, trying this out and doing it and having success with, with Grievous in, instead of BB-8. I don't like that because he takes away some of the uh, the stacks. And I just like the BB-8 one a little bit more. I feel like it's a lot more consistent. Um, so on top of that, um, he's going to have a lot of extra with every single droid battalion. He's going to have a lot more offense. And he's going to give out more tenacity and crit avoidance, which makes Magna Guard not be able to get crit whatsoever later on. And we're, we're going we're gonna to show you, we're going to have a lot, like 200 plus stacks of droid battalion. So his offense is going to go through the roof. Um, so continuing here, we're going to go to B2 next. I just opted to go for an entire potency set. Probably should have. I would recommend. I didn't do this. I really really should have gone for a potency cross as well. Just to make sure he gets even more buff immunities and um, all his other debuffs that he lands. Um, it's really important because with his other Zeta here, um, whenever he inflicts a debuff, he gives out more TM, which is awesome. So yeah, I, I went for a full potency set on everything, but... Try to go for potency cross. It would really help out with your RNG. You don't need anybody else to be a tanky person except for Magna Guard. So I don't even think you need a lot of protection here. It really only helps for the initial RNG from the very first phase. After that, you don't need it whatsoever because your Magna Guard will be taunting the entire rest of the encounter. So last but not least is um, Magna Guard. So Magna Guard doesn't even have 60 mods. Um, the reason he doesn't is because I had to nitpick um, mods that were having an extremely high just flat protection because mine is only gear 12 guys mine's only gear 12 here um if i had a gear 13 magna i would not really worry about that i would go for more percent stuff but since i only have gear 12 i have to go for this so like i'm going for an entire hp set i want to make sure he has a lot more hp um, i'm gonna try to get as much extra protection as possible so you have 25 or 2500 there um you have a pretty good chunk there with a protection primary another protection primary with okay stuff there and some more protection and more protection there so with all that being said you just go for protection on pretty much all these other primaries up here and then try to just get flat ones if you're going for good 12 magna um for protection um but here's here's mods and the stats i have found that 
Tebow, when he does happen to hit you, I don't think it happened in my run, but it has happened in previous runs. He can one-shot you for around 140k. So what we have here is I have a 98k protection and 44k HP. So that's close to the 140. His damage fluctuates. I've seen him hit for 120k. I've seen him hit for 140k. So the reason I have him this high for my Magna Guard is just to make sure you can actually tank. Because my Magna Guard, I have seen him tank hits when he's Guru 12 um, for like 120, 130k. Um, but if the Elders do a couple taps and then Tebow goes and hits you, you're for sure gone. You got to make sure that you heal him up full for the, for the full HP protection before... Tebow even does any hits on you. So there's some RNG here that took me around a few hours to do this. Is it worth it for a few signal data? I think in the long term it is because of all these um, relics we're going to need and the, the signal data we're going to need for these Galactic Legends. So with that being said, guys, let's hop over here and show you this attempt because this is going to take a little bit of time for me to um, explain it because there's a lot of explaining to do. So let's hop over. Gum in here. Um, I actually want to give a shout out to uh, what's his name? I think his name in Discord is I'm gonna just call you MC because that's your name, man. He he, he hit me and he he hit me up and he uh, he wanted to give me some ideas here and how to really help this and help help me rather show you guys and really what works best. So thank you, man. And here we go. So typically, what I would do here, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to. Uh, this is all sped up, by the way. It's going to be sped up here in a little bit. Typically, though. What you want to do here, guys, is use this little move. It's really hard to see now because it's out full. It's going really fast. But typically, whenever you get Magna's turn, let's just go to slow it down a little bit because this is kind of fast. Um, okay. So with Magna's turn here, um, you can see that the, ex the, the special event extra ability you have gives you more defense and a little bit more HP, right? So with that move, you want to really use that move on Magna for every single phase you can possibly start on because that's going to give you more defense. And with that, these Ewok Scouts won't be able to do a whole lot of damage to you. Um, and then with B1, you always want to spam your, your heal on Magna for the entirety of this run. You never really want to give it to anybody else. With B2's bonus turns, you're going to be able to just give, spam, more, spam more turn meter to your team. And... If you don't have the special, if you don't have the AoE um, buff immunity and, and all that dispelling on, on B2, then use that other special because with that special, it gives B1 more turn meter, which is really important. So in this one, you didn't see him use this fracture too much. What I was doing in my runs was I fractured one of the Ewok scouts just so it made it a lot easier for my RNG. So my, my Magna Guard didn't die really. And I was really able to just get those um, Illuminate Destinies off pretty quick. Um... So like right there, he's using basics. Ideally, I would just keep spamming my my specials because B two will get so many extra turns, and it will it will feed your B one so many extra um, AOEs and giving out more Joy Battalion stacks. So this is kind of how this one went. We're gonna speed up a little bit. Whenever you get down to killing the scouts and it's just these Ewok warriors, this is really where you want to maximize the amount of Joy Battalion stacks. And making sure that you get as many as you possibly can before you get into phase four. So just continuing on here. This one does take a little bit of extra time here. Because they're just so, so tanky, man. So now um, we're on to phase two. So phase two, this is the one that kind of got me before getting into phase four. This Any, any phase here with a lot of scouts is kind of sketchy in a little bit of a way. Because they can do a lot more DPS to you if you have the gear 12 Magna like I did. So here... I would uh, just kind of try to heal up Magna Guard, and whenever he does get his turn first, you got to make sure that you get his his uh, defense up um, from his extra ability that he has from the event. Like right there, he's using an AoE. I, I probably wouldn't do that personally. I would typically use the defense just to make sure that if the scouts do happen to go, which they will, I don't die so fast. Um, I don't think that this guy had a gear 12 Magna. Maybe he did. I don't know. But it seems like he's, he's tanking a lot more hits. But I would do that just to ensure that you don't lose your Magna Guard too early on. So in this one, that's kind of what you got to do in these first few phases, guys. You're, the, the main ideas and the main goals here is to stack up your B1 Joy Battalion stacks. And in between the phases, at the very end of each phase, you want to make sure that you have all your abilities off cooldown. Even more so between phases 3 to, and going into 4. You want to make sure that you have a lot of those ability cooldowns um, ready to go. So... With that being said, we're going to stop this one. We're going to go 
to go into my run, which is right over here. And this one starts off in uh, the end of phase three. So here's what you want to do just kind of going into phase into phase four is uh like i said you want to make sure that you have your lumen destiny ready to go you want to make sure that everything on thrawn is ready to go you want to use basics here um, everything you want to have on cooldown you can still use b2 specials because you get so many extra turns from hitting um or from from the ewoks either hitting uh, the magna guard so you're okay in that in that um aspect so like you can see right there i'm using the other special which calls in b1 um so now we're on to phase four in a little bit. There we go, boom. So this is uh, this is really RNG dependent, guys. If there's really anything here that's really RNG is a couple things with Tebow. You wanna make sure that first and foremost, you can see here that my BB-8 is going before Thrawn. That is really important because you wanna have him give out all the turn meter to your droids so that they can do as many hits before Thrawn fractures. And what that does is it gives you a lot more damage on the elders on the side, um, which makes it a lot easier to kill them later on. So that's one of the big things. You want to make sure that your, your BB-8 goes before Thrawn's Fracture. Because if, if Thrawn goes before BB-8's Destiny goes off, the, the Fracture will get, you know, the, the Fracture will be off really, really quick. So you want to make sure that the Destiny goes off before Fracture. And then secondly, the RNG is with B2's getting his extra bonus turns from hitting Magna Guard from the elders and buff muni landing on um tebow so let's see if i get that that the rng which i'm pretty sure i did because i already won this so you, you can see here i have like 216 stacks of droid battalion which is nice so first move with ron in this in this phase you got to fracture um tebow it's a must you got to do that and then here you're going to just apply some more uh some more some more debuffs you want to get the freaking ball rolling Oh my gosh, I, I spent so much time doing this. Okay, and then you want to just keep on healing. Even though, like right there, he didn't have, you know, he didn't get hit too much. You want to just heal him up regardless, man. So we're going to get some more. We got a three-man buff muni, which is really clutch. Um, we got to wait and see, though, if they cleanse it off, which they do. Because it seems like they have unlimited uses of their cleanses and healing. Um, but they haven't. So maybe you got a little bit of good RNG there. I'm not too sure. But right here... I'm going to heal up BB-8 so that I can try to reduce his cooldown even further on his next Illuminate Destiny. And he was the highest turn meter anyway, so I'm going to be able to cycle back to Thrawn faster. And then with this, I got kind of lucky there. I, I uh, got my B2 proc his bonus turn, which gives out even more TM to my, my, uh, my droids. Which you can see here. Let's just back it up a little bit. What that really did right there, that bonus turn, made it so B2 goes. We got some, some uh, more debuffs landing. And B2, or B1 is getting more turn meter from those specials, which actually made Magna Guard go before Tebow using his special. And now we got a stun there, which was nice. And we can heal him up even further so he's at full before Tebow can even go. So typically what Tebow does, though, first is he uses his his uh, going into stealth move. But since he has buff muni here, he doesn't have stealth, which is really the big RNG here. You want to make sure that he doesn't have stealth. You want to make sure that he has buff muni so that stealth doesn't happen. And uh, that's his first move. His second move is when he's going to hit you hard. So we actually cycled pretty fast back to Thrawn's second fracture. So he's already under fracture again. And the side elders are really low, which is really great to see. We have another Destiny, which is why we cycled that to Thrawn and try and TM swap there so they get it fast. And it looks pretty solid so far, actually. I'm not going to lie. Um, we're going to just do another one of these defense up things so we have more defense up before Tebow does anything crazy to us, which is going to happen here in a little bit. There you can see right there. So I'm going to just rewind it a little bit. We're going to slow it down. We're going to see how much damage that actually did because that's a good indication of what your Magna Guard should be modded around. So if we can just see this here in a little bit. Okay, where was it? It was right about here. Boom. Okay, so the defense up kind of helps. Um, this is around the damage I've seen throughout me doing this the last three hours. The damage is around the 120 to 140 mark. So if you guys can shoot to like the 140k for HP and protection on your Magna Guard, that will be super, super helpful. And then defense up will help you as well. So try to eat, try to, try to prepare yourself to eat at least one hit from Tebow. So that's what I did here. So now continuing on what happens. Let's see if we can still pull this off You get some more more bonus turns here we got another fracture which is clutch we're going to heal him up full again with that special and we're looking pretty solid um 
here on out, we already we already pretty much won because we're getting our cooldowns back really fast. More fractures, more destinies, more more exposes, really doing some extra damage there. And down goes Tebow. So, what do we do from here? Well, it's pretty dang easy, guys. You just do the exact same things, exact same things from phases one to three. Um, you want to make sure that you still have defense up on your Magna Guard. You want to heal up your Magna Guard with B1, and you want to try to fracture. I'd say. Fracturing some of these scouts can be kind of helpful here with Ron just so that you don't do as much damage to your gear 12 Magna Guard. And just doing the same thing, you know, saving your big specials like Illumin Destiny for the for the end of the round. So you have it for the for the next rounds. Just kind of rinse, repeat there. So we're gonna kind of skip ahead a little bit because these do take a long time. Um this this took me I, I think from I, I I timed it. From phases one getting to phase four, it took me around eight minutes of playing. So this is this is phase six, the same thing, nothing crazy still. Um, it doesn't really get too crazy until back into phase eight, the last phase. So there we go. We have 300, 300 stacks of Droid Battalion, which is insane. So this is like uh, we're just starting up phase seven again. Boom, boom, boom. It's pretty easy. There's no Tebow. So yeah, it's pretty easy, guys. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We're, we're getting our way into phase eight. We're pretty dang close to our new Lume Destiny. And I think I just saw my B1 hitting for like 70k, no no crits, which is insane. So now we're going to do some more AoEs. In this phase, last phase, you want to kill Elder first. And then you want to kind of work down Logre. And also, I might even add, you want to probably go for Scout a little bit earlier as well. Because you can do some big DPS. The reason you want to kind of worry about Elder and Logre is because Elder can revive and Scout... Um, and then rather log rate can do his, you know, you can just see right there, his dazes. So it's nice that we had Illumin Destiny there to cleanse that daze off. If I didn't, I'd probably just use a team swap with Thrawn and cleanse that there too. Um, so yeah, just kind of the same things. This is kind of a mix between killing elders and doing the same things we've done previous, previous phases. It's nothing too crazy, I'd say. Um, just keep on healing and healing and healing. Um, Wicket, yeah, you can do some big DPS, but it's nowhere enough to really, you know, make you, uh, you know, nervous or anything. You shouldn't be any, any bit of afraid here. You're pretty much good to go. After you, after you get phase four done, you have everybody alive, you are golden. You are golden, my friend. So, yeah, Elder's last. Or not Elder, <laughs> what am I talking about? Elder just died there. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty much smooth, smooth sailing from here, guys. So, that's, that's pretty much it. Your B1 has so much extra offense at this end of the battle where you just mow them down. You mow them down, you mow them down, you mow them down. Illumin another Illuminated Destiny. That's about it, guys. So, um, yeah, you can do this with Gear 12. You don't need Gear 13 on pretty much anybody. I would only say you need Gear 13 on, like, maybe B1. Gear 13 Magna would be so much better here, though. Um, you need B, B, uh, B1 Gear 13, though, for the extra offense, I'd say, down here in the end of the stretches. Um, maybe not. I don't know. I haven't seen anybody without a B1 Gear 13 do it. So that's it for today, guys. Um, what do you guys think? You guys, uh, you guys like these type of assault battles? I want to see if I can pull off the, the next one with the, the places of power with all those Jedi and Yoda popping off on me. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoy this and you found it informative or whatever, um, you know, give it a like, share it around. And, and if you guys are new here to the channel, feel free to sub. Um, we got a Discord and a Patreon and also channel memberships. If you guys want to go check out that and support me there if you do feel like it. But that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all later.